Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and today I've got more of the Brimfield Flea Market from September 2022. And don't worry, there's plenty more to see. So the first thing I saw were some old Disney VHS tapes. These came out in about the mid to late 90s. They're all factory sealed in great condition. He was asking 150 for all of them, or 25 a piece, which is actually not a great deal. I went online and on eBay they seem to be selling for anywhere between about $3 to $15 a piece. So asking 150 for all of them is not really a great deal. Uh, and that's why you really should try to bring a cell phone to Brimfield or any other flea market so you can look up the prices before you buy. I love booths like this where they're selling old toys from the 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, but when I see them set up like this, I immediately think expensive. And I definitely wasn't wrong in this case. For example, this car here he was selling for $275. It very well may be worth that, I really don't know. But um, I do know it's more than I can afford. He was asking about $13.25, I think, on this car here. Um, if anybody out there knows, is it worth that much? Again, I really have no clue, and it's really hard to look up that type of thing for sale online because unless it has the exact make and model, it's really hard to do a search for, you know, antique red push car. So let me know. Now, these prices here are a little bit more uh, in my price range for sure. Three for a dollar, 15 toys for a dollar. Not bad. Just not into that type of toy, so. He does have some good prices on these games here. This uh, Age of Empires 3 for the PC is only a dollar. You, you can't really argue with a dollar. And the Xbox games, I think, were fairly reasonably priced as well. There just weren't any in here that I was interested in or I didn't already have. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks. I don't know if you can use that one. I don't see any people. I don't know what I got. Here's an old NES game from the mid-80s. This is Back to the Future. Still got the original box. Not in the best shape, uh, but those seem to be going for quite a bit online. That's probably, $85 is probably about right for that give or take. And here's uh, Super Mario World, asking 40 for that. That might be a little bit high. I saw those going for about 25 or so online. I'm an 80s kid, and I'm really into Garbage Pail Kids, especially the originals from the mid to late 80s. And so these caught my eye here. These are large. Obviously, these are bigger than normal Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, these ones are all political, it looks like. From what I can tell, they're from about 2016. And he was asking $950 for that one, which, that's got to be overpriced. And I'm sorry. I went online. I could only find one that had sold, and it sold for about $100. So $950 is a bit more than I think they're worth. But I could be wrong. These are pretty cool. These are 1976, 1977 Topps Tallboy basketball cards. And they're called Tallboys because they're taller than normal sports cards. I think the only um, years they did the Tall Boys was like 69 through 71, and then they had a gap, and then I think they started up in 76 again. 
And they haven't done them since, as far as I know. But I just think they're cool. They just look so different. And I actually have a few of the 1970-71 uh, set. These are old ship's clocks, and basically they were made in such a way that they could withstand waves and rocking motion and still keep good time. This is a pretty cool set of binoculars. I actually don't know what they are. I'm guessing that center thing there is for range finding, but uh, I'm really not sure. This is a stereopticon with a bunch of stereo cards. I've never actually seen one that looks like this before. They usually look like this. Um, so this one's a bit unusual. And that's a lot of stereo cards. And like always, you can see they're all warped. I don't think I've ever seen one that isn't warped like that. And I've asked it before, but I wonder if there's a way you can fix that. Some sort of uh, pressing you could probably do to them. That doesn't belong. Yeah, the rest of them are all older ones. Uh, yeah, no, this is a, I own a fly box. A lot of things with stuff on it. Oh, 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 oh. One of them, I'm trying to find one. Mm -hmm. The nether leaves, this is the picture he kept in his wallet or whatever. Oh, okay, I just didn't, it looked odd sitting there. Yeah, no, it's uh, all there. Yeah. I think Actually, so this is, wallet it probably money. came from out of this box and they could It might have, it, yeah, my yeah. stuff floats around from time to time. I can tell you the man's name that he used to be when he passed away. No, he used to be, um, he was in Colombia when he had that wall. It was all his Colombian contacts. I like these little plastic airplane toys here. Um, they say they're Delta Super DC-8s. And I looked it up online, and the Super DC-8 came out in 1966, and I think it went out of production in 1972. So I would assume those were from about that time frame. I'm guessing they probably would have been given out as promotions uh, to kids, probably when they were going on a flight. Kind of like the way Eastern used to give out um, little sets of wings you could wear. This is an old store display for Elgin watches. Uh, Elgin went out of business in 1968, and I'm guessing that's probably from the 50s or 60s. It's pretty cool. This is probably the most common type of computer you'll see at a flea market. This is an old Apple Macintosh. This is a Mac Classic from about 91, I think. And they made computers that looked generally like that from about the mid-80s up until the early to mid-90s. And I think what makes them so popular is just the fact that they don't look like anything else out there. Here's a whole bunch of old Atari 2600 games. These are going to be mostly from the late 70s or early 80s. And even though they're that old, they're usually not worth that much. Usually just a few bucks, maybe 10 bucks at the most. Uh, which is really cheap compared to like NES or Super NES games. And I think the reason is, to be honest, compared to Nintendo and Sega games, they're just not that good. They're so basic that it's really hard to get into them, especially nowadays. But that's just my opinion. These are big little books, and you can tell these are the uh, later ones because they're all paperback. The original ones had hardcovers. They were the same size, but they were hardcover. Uh, but these are still pretty cool. I would guess these are probably from the late 60s, early 70s. Right. 
I think this is an original Rock'em Sock'em Robots from the 1960s. He's asking $295. Uh, I looked it up on eBay, and it does seem to be selling for about $300 on average. So that's actually not a bad price. I like that buckle up sign. I'm guessing that's probably from the 60s or 70s when, um, you know, they, they first started mandating seatbelts in cars. Just a guess there, though. So if there's any photography experts watching, let me know what this is. Obviously, it's a family portrait. I'm guessing from the early 20th century, just based on what they're wearing. But it kind of looks like a button to me. I'm sure it's not. But I've never seen a uh, photo before that has that circular domed shape. So if anybody knows what that is, uh, please let me know in the comments. Here's something else I'm not too familiar with. Obviously, it's an antique radio. I'm assuming that's a loudspeaker on the top. Uh, he's asking 200 for it. I'm assuming it's probably from the 20s or 30s. That would be my guess. But I haven't seen too many like that with that unusual loudspeaker design. And he's actually got two of them. This one on the end is pretty much the same thing. And I think he was asking about the same for it, about 200. They definitely look cool, that's for sure. I would love to have an airplane model like this, especially one with an airline on it like Delta. Uh, this is a Boeing 767. I'm guessing it's probably from the 80s. And uh, he was asking 175 for it, which is more than I can afford, but I think it's probably worth that, honestly. That's, that's probably not a bad price. Maybe someday if I get enough subscribers, I'll actually be able to afford stuff like that. That's the dream, at least. <laughs> I like this too. This is a model of an old ironclad ship uh, from about the 1860s, like the Civil War period. Pretty cool. I would love to have it, but 350 can't afford it. He might perk up as the years go by. I'm on the lookout for an antique bubble gum or candy machine, kind of like this one. He was asking 135 for it. 
but I don't think it's that old because the display window there is plastic rather than glass. So I'm guessing it's probably from the 70s at the earliest, and I think I'm looking for something just a bit earlier than that. I've always wanted one of these ceramic Christmas trees because uh, my grandmother had one when I was a kid back in the 70s and 80s. But for some reason, the prices on those ceramic Christmas trees has gone through the roof. I remember you could find them for almost nothing in the past, and now they're going for a few hundred dollars sometimes. I like this big radio here in the center. As far as I can tell, it's a 1955 Shab Lorenz W31. And it's hard to find any prices for them online. I only saw one that sold, and it um, didn't say what the price was. But I would guess it probably goes for at least a couple hundred dollars in working condition. And I've always got to know what's in the box or what's in the suitcase. And this time it's just a manual typewriter, nothing too spectacular. This guy here has a lot of great stuff, a lot of abstract art, um, sculptures, that type of thing. But as you can imagine, it's all very, very expensive. He had this sculpture priced at uh, 7400 which is, again is just a little bit outside my price range, just a bit. And he was asking 2100 for this sundial. And he had this red sculpture here priced at uh, 2300 Never heard of this drink before, FBI. Of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but I know it can't possibly mean that. Well, I knew you would be. Lakeview Beverages. Never heard of that one before. 
This will take nothing to fix it. Wheaton's famous beverages. Never heard of any of these. Leave the towel wrap on Interesting. If anybody's ever had any of those before, let me know. <laughs> Here's one of the bigger pieces of uranium where I've ever seen before, and in yellow, which is a bonus. And the only way to tell, though, for sure if it's uranium ware is to whip out the um, UV flashlight, which I just did. And you can see it's lighting up bright green. So that is uranium ware. Hi, excuse me. Hey, how much is this? Uh, that's expensive. Uh, Figured, but I yeah, wasn't sure. Uranium. Mike. Mike! Oh. 140. Okay, thanks. I was thinking maybe 50. And if he had said 50, I would have bought it, but 140, that's way higher than I'm willing to pay. There's a bunch more video games, and of course the ones that catch my eye are the ones in the front there, the Sega Genesis games. But sadly, all they have left are the sports titles, which I just don't care about. At least we know the same people. Yeah. <laughs> we work at the same flea market in Springfield. That's, that's worth a lot. Yeah. How much it takes me to press that button on that walk of hockey? So here's something I've never seen before, Charlie and Me. It's an old, I guess you'd say a board game from about 1967 from what I could find. And it seems to range in price from about $30 to $90 on eBay. So pretty cool. Now this is much more my style, this old Masters of the Universe cassette player. I would guess it was probably from about 1983, give or take a year or two. And um, he's asking 125 for it. I looked it up online on eBay, and it seems to be selling for pretty much 125. So he's he's doing eBay prices here, which is reasonable because you know, at least unlike on eBay, you don't have to pay for shipping, and you can actually see the item you're buying before you get it. There's a nice old fridge, probably from the late 50s, early 60s, I'm guessing. And I think this is the type of fridge that kids would get stuck in because it has this latch on the outside. So if you get it stuck inside, you can't just push it open. You're pretty much stuck in there unless somebody uh, remembers to let you out. So here's an example of a toy that would be really disappointing to most kids. It's Super Globo. You'd think, oh, it's He-Man. Great. But you get it home, it's basically just a plastic bag. You fill it with air, and it says Masters of the Universe on it. That's it. 
really cheaply made. And I know I say this a lot, but this is something that I am regretful of not picking up. These are Viewmaster reels, and they're from Disneyland. So this is Tomorrowland. That was Fantasyland. Uh, I have no idea how much they're worth or how much he was asking for them because I didn't ask. I don't know why I didn't ask. I just didn't. But I would love to uh, pick those up if they're there next time. Now, I know a little bit about model railroads, but I've never seen one this big before. Except for, like, I've seen, like, cheapo toy plastic ones, but this one is metal. So if anybody knows what this is, what gauge is that? Is that a standard gauge you can buy, or is that a custom-made train set? And he's asking 1500 for it. An erector set. Now, this is something you don't see too, too often. This is definitely before my time. I know my dad had an erector set when he was a kid back in the 50s. But I don't think they were really a thing anymore by the time I was using toys back in the 70s and 80s. And there you have it. That's the end of part six of the September 2022 Brimfield Flea Market. I have two more parts coming up before I finally finish it out. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. And please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.